It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell S2716DG. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right. There's also a power LED here at the end and that's just a little sort of white vertical slit running from the middle of the button to the uh, frontmost edge and it's from a normal viewing position it's not very bright at all it's uh, just a tiny little dot as you can see there it uh, might even look brighter in the video than it does in real life not, not distracting at all in my opinion if you press the first button or any of the other buttons except for that power button at the end there it brings up a little quick menu the first button there is actually, um, well the first two are actually customizable, but by default the first one allows you to select one of a, a couple of uh, preset modes. So there is standard warm, cool and custom colour, they just change the colour temperature and if you select custom colour you can actually manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. The second button along, which again is a, a custom key, so you can customise this in the OSD, as I'll show you in a little bit, controls the volume um, of anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack. And you can see at all times the uh, button functions are quite clearly labelled on the screen. third button along there is the main menu system, and the fourth button is X, or Exit. So the main menu is split into various different sections. As is usual for a modern Dell monitor, there's an energy use bar there, which basically reflects the brightness level of the screen uh, and how much energy it is therefore using. So you can change the brightness and the contrast. Next there's input source, which allows you to select the DP or HDMI input as your active input for the monitor. There's a colour menu which allows you to again select one of the preset modes or reset uh, this to the factory defaults. There is display and that has a response time setting which you should really leave at normal as we recommend in the review. Um, but there is also a fast mode. Don't be duped into thinking that fast will be faster and therefore better. It doesn't quite work like that with monitors. There's also a couple of greyed out options here. It says ULMB and ULMB pulse width. And if I enable ULMB, ultra low motion blur, you should be able to um, see those settings. So I'm just in the NVIDIA control panel at the moment. And if I change monitor technology to ULMB, this is all covered in the review by the way. And also change the refresh rate to 120 hertz or 100 or 85 hertz because those are the three that will work with ULMB. And then go back onto the menu. It should hopefully give me the options. Yeah, there we are, ULMB. As you can see, it's disabled at the moment. I can enable this and you can also change um, I was going to say you can probably notice the screen flickering but um, actually my camera compensates quite nicely for the uh, flickering at this particular refresh rate anyway so it won't appear that it is flickering on the camera um, but I cover all of this in the review so I'm not going to go through it here but I will say the uh, pulse width setting 100 by default gives you the longest on period of the strobe and therefore the highest potential brightness and lowering this lowers the brightness which you'll be able to see on the video and it also shortens the on period so it potentially gives you better motion clarity and um, you can I mean it gives you lots of flexibility you can adjust this in increments of, of 1 between uh, 10 and 100 
I think most users would be quite happy with the uh, default setting of 100 to be honest and that does give the maximum brightness and you can also reset all of this to the factory defaults next there's the audio menu which allows you to change the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack or reset this to the default value as menu and it allows you to change various options related to the OSD itself for example the language that it's displayed in there are various different options there the transparency so how transparent or translucent you want the menu to be you can change that a little bit how long you want the OSD to remain on the screen after the last button press before it automatically disappears. So you can set that between 5 and 60 seconds. I've got it set to 60 at the moment uh, just for the sake of the video so it doesn't just disappear on me which can be quite annoying. And of course you can exit the OSD at any time by just keep on uh, pressing the back button. You can also reset those settings to the factory defaults with the reset menu option at the bottom there. As I was mentioning earlier, you can actually personalise or customise the first two keys before you enter the main menu. They're called shortcut keys, so the shortcut key 1 and 2. So if you recall, one of them allows you to change the preset mode, so the volume by default. You could have it so it allows you to change the brightness and contrast or the input source as well. So now I've changed the, the first one to brightness and contrast. It'll change the little symbol that's displayed there, so there's a little brightness icon there. And as you can see you can quickly change the brightness and the contrast. And you can reset the personalization settings so these these particular settings, uh, the shortcut keys, to the factory defaults if you'd like as well. And I'll just do that um, there. So there you go, just, just reset these, it didn't reset anything else. Finally there's others and this has uh, a couple of options, actually only has one option and again an option to um, actually that's a factory reset, so that will reset everything to the factory defaults on all of the menu uh, systems, all of the different sections of the menu I should say. So I won't accidentally press that because then I'll be very annoyed with myself if I do. But there's an option here, monitor deep sleep. And this is enabled by default, it's part of the Energy Star certification program um, to give sort of good marks in the Energy Star rating. Um, this is enabled by default and it does conserve a bit of power. If you disable this, um, it means that the monitor is more likely to spring back to life properly after the computer resumes from sleep. So if you do send your computer to sleep um, and you've got deep sleep enabled, you might notice that the monitor doesn't actually spring back to life, even though the computer should have uh, resumed from its sleep. Um, so basically if you do use sleep uh, a lot then disable this. I don't use sleep so it doesn't really bother me at all either way. There's also a little thing at the bottom there that gives you a little symbol indicating the um, the input used. Um, that doesn't exactly look very clear uh, as DisplayPort rather than HDMI there so I'm not sure if that does change, I can't actually remember. Um, but it also shows the resolution current refresh rate and the mode um, and if you're running anything other than 2560 by 1440 at 144 hertz it'll actually just remind you that the optimal is that it'll remind you over here as well um, normal mode means it's in its normal fixed refresh rate mode um, if you're running ULMB it'll say ULMB and if you're running G-Sync it'll say G-Sync now I do have G-Sync active but only for full screen at the moment um, which means if I open a game or full screen application it'll enable G-Sync unlike some monitors the power light stays um, in its normal white state permanently on so that doesn't indicate the G-Sync status but if you 
go into the menu, you can see there it now says G-Sync mode. So that's just a little thing that'll let you know that it is actually using G-Sync. Now if I exit this application, it then returns to normal mode. If you've got the uh, setting selected on G-Sync where it uses it for windowed applications as well as full screen, then you might see it saying G-Sync more often, not just when you're in games. And that's actually all there is to this menu system. You can see it's a bit more cut down compared to what Dell usually have. Um, it's quite normal for G-Sync monitors because they have a G-Sync module rather than their normal scaler. Uh, they are often a bit cut down in comparison when it comes to the OSD. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the full review on pcmonitors.info.